Dear learners, uh, greetings from IIT Guwahati. We are in the MOOCs course, Power Plant System Engineering. I welcome you all for this course. So, in the first module, we have designed it based on the previous topics of thermodynamics. So, in this module, we will try to review the basic concepts of thermodynamics, different terminologies that are used in this uh, basic course on thermodynamics. Then we will touch upon another fundamental topics of interest which is the pure substance, properties of pure substance. So, there we will touch upon the on a major aspects about the uh, different equations that are used for perfect gas. Side by side, we will also have uh, emphasis on mainly water and saturated water, superheated water and superheated steam and their properties. So, uh, in this first module, we will try to uh, touch upon how to use steam tables, property data tables that are very vital for subsequent lectures in this course. And in this subsequent lectures, we have mainly dealing with steam power systems, gas power systems and renewable energy power systems. So, all these things are like power generating devices, but very basic concepts for this power generating devices comes from the theory or laws of thermodynamics that is first law and second law. So, these two things subsequently lead to the concept of heat engines in which it is possible for any device that works in a cyclic manner uh, which can produce low grade energy in of heat to the soft work okay, or work output. So, with this concept all subsequent uh, modules are designed. So, at this point I need to emphasize that basic aspects of thermodynamics is very vital. And uh, so, however, we will restrict our attention to, to particularly to some concepts uh, which we will be using frequently in the subsequent module. So, let us revisit the uh, basic aspects of thermodynamics. So, in this first lecture which is part 1, we will talk about thermodynamic concepts. So, mainly we will be uh, discussing on terminologies. Then first law of thermodynamics, steady flow energy equations. Then we have property relationship and mainly we will see what is perfect gas and what is no imperfect gas. Then we will touch upon some of the steady flow devices which are basically governed by the uh, first law or steady flow energy equations. So, to start with the terminology, let us try to understand that in our basic introduction course, I have emphasized these figures. So, basically there are three uh, types of energy, thermal energy, electrical energy and mechanical energy. And these energies are very vital for the human necessity or human uh, mankind survival. So, however, the conversion of one form of energy to other form is possible. So, it is very easy that we can have a conversion between mechanical and electrical. Then we can also have mechanical and thermal again from thermal and electrical, but however, apart from these basic energy sources and for them the main basic resources is the fossil fuel. But however, there are other types of energy which are available in the nature like solar, geothermal, chemical fuels, nuclear, hydro or wind that are also available. So, those are the kind of what we call them as a renewable form of energy or alternative resources. But they can be coupled either to any one of the energy resources and ultimately we need to have electrical energy in the end for our survival of the mankind. And in order to have this particular conversion, we require the concept of thermodynamics. So, ideally speaking that the word thermodynamics is derived from a Greek word that is thermi and dynamics. Thermi means it is heat, dynamics means power. 
So, conversion of heat to power is the basic necessity to deal with various application areas. And in these various application areas, we have power plants which is either steam or gas based or we can have IC engines, we can have gas turbine engines or aircraft engines. Then we will also have refrigeration and air conditioning. However, in this power plant system engineering, we will be talking about mainly the production uh, those devices that can produce power. So, refrigeration and air conditioning is a separate topics because it consumes power for cooling purposes. So, that is a different topics of interest, but however, our main attention will touch upon the production of power through various means which I have mentioned in this figure. Then moving further to deal with different terminology, we all know that in thermodynamics we define a systems in which our attention is focused and any systems is associated with its boundary. That means, any change in the systems is felt within this boundary and beyond this boundary we call this as a surroundings. So, system and surroundings constitutes universe. So, this is the very basic philosophy of thermodynamics and of course, one can think of this boundary as a fixed boundary or a moving boundary. Then while talking about the systems, the system uh, with thermodynamic viewpoint system is treated as a closed systems or open systems. So, in a closed systems we can say that there are some fixed amount of mass which is uh, concentrated in the uh, systems. And this mass can be compressed or expanded within its own systems. That means, change of state of the system uh, of the mass is allowed within that uh, vicinity. But however, the system is not allowed to uh, have interaction of mass from the outside. So, that is what we say uh, for a closed systems, there is no mass interactions, but uh, it has a flexibility, the closed system has a flexibility, it can interact uh, with surroundings by virtue of energy interactions. Now, when you move on to uh, an open systems and many times we refer it as a control volume, so in which that uh, the volume of the system is going to change because this open system allows for the mass to come in and to come out. And of course, it also allows energy to enter into this system and it can go out. So, through this process the open systems allows both mass and energy interactions. And on a special case when we have this uh, there is no mass and energy interactions is possible. So, we call it as a isolated system. Then moving further we in, in thermodynamics we defined a state. State is a means is that means when a particular uh, system is specified by its location or identity and this identity is normally referred in terms of pressure volume coordinates and we call this as a thermodynamic states. So, state means that means when the all properties of a system has a definite value then it is called as a states and properties are nothing but the coordinates of the state. Now, when the coordinates change, so that means that is a change of state. So, when there is a change of state, then it has to go in a certain path or some uh, that means there is a succession of change of states uh, happens for the systems and that we call it as a path. Now, if you identically or completely define this path, then we call this as a process. So, thermodynamically we have many processes like isothermal, isobaric, isochoric and so many processes are there. So, that means, uh, the mathematically we can specify how the change of state happens during this uh, when the system goes from one point to other point. Now, when we have any number of processes, multiple number of processes, but uh, and that happens uh, in such a way that uh, the for a given system it when it starts with a particular location and uh, it undergoes different uh, states and, and then obviously when it undergoes different states it passes uh, that means it its path is specified that means it has uh, the there are there is change of state so it is defined by some certain processes but when you say it's a cycle 
the initial state and the final state must be identical. So, what we can say define the cycle it is as a series of change of state uh, in which the final state is identical with the initial state we call this as a cycle. So, in this particular figure we, we can say that we start with a we define a state of a system at point 1 and it goes to point 2 in, uh, in a path which is B, but however again that point 2 comes back to original state in another process or path, but how, uh, but what we say is that so 1 B 2 A and 1 forms a cycle. Then another kind of uh, study that we also deal with or we come across is a quasi static processes. So, obviously, when there is a coordinates of a system change, we say that is a uh, some change of state happens. So, it happens in a particular process, but what happens uh, if this change of state happens in a very slow manner, then we view these systems as a series of changes that happens within the systems and uh, this change happens in a very slow manner. So, as a result although there is a change internally, but external effect due to this change is very much negligible because system is always said to be in equilibrium with its surroundings at all points. So, such a process we define it as a quasi static process. Uh, so, a quasi static process occurs through series of equilibrium states and although there is a change of state, but the surroundings is not affected by this change, because uh, system and surroundings are always in the equilibrium state. So, through a simple figure that we can explain about a quasi static process is that if you look at this figure, uh, we have a piston cylinder device and in this uh, piston we are uh, there is a gas which is at initial state p1 v1 t1 and this initial state is happened due to a weight which is kept on these pistons and uh, so we have this systems its boundary so what happens there are two instances if you remove this particular weight completely so, obviously, the system which is at initial state will move on to this final state P 2 V 2 T 2. So, initial coordinates of the system was P 1 V 1 T 1 and final coordinate of the system becomes P 2 V 2 T 2, but through this process what happens there is a change happens, but that change was instantaneous because we have taken out this weight instantly from this pistons, but uh, that means the point 1 goes to point 2 and the change that happens in the intermediate locations it is a very instantaneous. So, such process cannot be called as a quasi static process rather what we can think of that this particular weight can be imagined to be have a multiple uh, you can divide it at a small small weights that constitutes this w that means they have n number of weights and this n number of weights masses are combinedly gives the total weight w. So, what we do is that you take one by one. So, when you start with initial state 1, then when you take one, one of the weight then it goes to another point, when you take another weight it goes to another point and likewise there is a change that happens and through this process it uh, final state becomes 2. That means, when you take the last mass then it becomes 2. So, through this process what happens there are changes happening through this intermediate states points, but they are occurring in a very slow manner. So, we call them as equilibrium states and complete process we call this as a quasi static process. So, this is what very vital because most of the processes are defined in thermodynamically to happen in a quasi static manner. Then we have a concept of work and heat because uh, when you deal with energy there are two variants of energy that thermodynamics tells us one is in the form of work other is in the form of heat. So, when we view this as a work because either we can work is a kind of a energy which is viewed in rising mass or that means through that energy we can imagine that a mass can be taken from one height to other 
and sometimes we call this as a PDV work and, th and that PDV work we normally refer it in a cl closed systems. Now, anything that happens by virtue of temperature difference, so those form of energy interactions we call it as a heat and this energy interactions is possible when we they cross the system boundary. That means, as long as they are within the system we do not see it as a interactions rather we say there is a change, but that change remains within the boundaries. When the so that means, whether you say work or heat it is a boundary phenomena and we view them only when they cross the boundary. Again another important point is that the work and heat during a quasi static process depends on the path they follow. For example, in this process if you say that the change of state that happens from 1 to 2 in a quasi static or equilibrium states manner, we can say that there is a path followed by this and this path can be completely specified and through this process there is an interactions either heat or work and we call it as a so sense both heat and work are called as path functions. And of course, they are treated as a inexact or imperfect differential and they are not associated with a particular state rather they are associated with a process. That means, their identity is with respect to a process not a particular state. Another point I need to emphasize here that terminology that we used for work and heat interactions. So, these there are possibilities that heat can be added to the systems or heat can be rejected from the systems. So, when we add this heat then Q is treated as a positive when you take out uh, this heat we call this as a negative and in same terminology when work is done by the systems we say it is a positive and work is done on the systems it is a negative. So, all these notations has to do side by side. So, heat addition means positive work done by the system means it is positive. So, with these notations all other consequences can be framed. Then we will move on to properties and thermodynamically we view the properties either intensive or extensive. So, that means, every system is defined by its own identity or states. So, that state is defined by its property pressure, volume, temperature all are thermodynamic properties, but they are broadly categorized either they are intensive or extensive. So, intensive properties are independent on of mass and size. So, for example, temperature, pressure, density they are treated as intensive properties. Then we have extensive properties that depends on the size of the systems that is mass dependent. So, for example, mass, volume and energy they are treated as a mass dependence. For example, if you can say that which property is an intensive and extensive, let us take a container or rigid systems in which which has a volume V, temperature T, pressure P, mass M and density contains a gas which has a density rho. Now, what we do? We make a partition, we can make a partition that means, this is your initial stage and we make this partition state. When you make a partition, what may happen? Mass may be half. So, that means, you can if you just drop a partition among them, mass we can make it half, volume also you can make it half, but both partitions by the gas or fluid which is in the both the partitions they will have a same pressure, same temperature and same density. That means, pressure, temperature and density do not change whether mass changes. So, that means, pressure, temperature, density they are mass independent that is what we call the name as a intensive properties and others are extensive properties. Now, coming back to energy energy is nothing but the potential of uh, flow that exists in various from chemical, mechanical and, uh, that and mechanical also you can have a kinetic and potential. Then you can also have thermal, nuclear and apart from that we will also deal with the another kind of energy that is called a internal energy which happens within the systems and it is a microscopic form of energy and that why did you define this? Because 
it talks about the molecular motions which happens in the either there can be translation, vibration or rotations and combinedly we call this as a internal energy. And when we say that internal energy is associated with the kinetic energy of the molecules, we say it is a sensible energy and that is happens due to change in the temperatures. So, when this internal energy is used for binding the molecules in its phase then and we want to go for a change of phase then such energy we call as a latent energy. But however, this internal energy is a strong function of temperatures and that is for pure substance. And in our entire course we will talk about an internal energy the function of internal energy as a temperature only. Then let us review the first law of thermodynamics. So, it says that energy can be it is a what we call as a conservation of energy principles. So, it says that energy of the system undergoing a change or processes can be increased or decreased by exchange with the surroundings and they can be converted from one form to other within that systems. So, through this process it says that uh, energy is conserved there is a possibility of change of energy from in one form to other form, but the accountability is that how more total energy which enters into the systems and that must go out of the systems. So, energy auditing will tell you that total accounting of energy that enters and goes they must balance each other, but however, the conversion is allowed, but it does not indicate whether the conversion of energy from one takes place from one form to other completely or performed perfectly or not. And uh, to define this uh, energy uh, or to define the first law, a most ideal system that we can choose is open system because an open system allows both mass and energy interactions. And this energy interaction is possible either by heat or work. So, hence we will view this open system as a benchmark to define this first law. Now, apart from this we also introduce one other form of energy which is called as a flow energy and the flow energy that comes because there is a mass that enters into it. So, we say that mass has certain energy which pushes the fluid into the systems and that fluid also gets pushed out from the systems and uh, this change happens by virtue of this pressure difference and we combinedly call them as a flow energy. So, the total energy that enters either it can enter as a potential energy form, kinetic energy form, internal energy form or flow energy form and the also this energy that can leave out from the system is also in the same form. Apart from that the open system also interacts with heat or work. Now, a most ideal way of looking at this change of state is to happen is that it is a completely transient state where mass inflow mass, mass outflow can also vary with time, but ideally for to frame our first law in a very precise manner uh, we will assume it to be a steady state steady flow systems triple SF system and for that we are going to see that how we need to make this energy auditing which takes care about the all form of energy. So, a steady flow systems allows the heat interactions work interactions apart from this mechanical energy. That mechanical energy comes by virtue of potential and kinetic energies. Now, let us see that uh, do this energy auditing for this open systems. So, in this figure if you apply this first law what we can see what is entering into the systems that is state 1 and uh, delta q that is through heat interactions. So, this delta q is nothing but the heat uh, net heat which is gets added into the system. So, that is what it take it is taken as a positives. So, that is entire thing that enters is taken as a positive and the net work interactions that is work done by the systems we interpret as a delta w or we sometimes we call as a steady flow work and this is what it is in the right hand side of this equations. Apart from that what is entering through this state 1 is combination of P e 1, K e 1 
I 1 and F E 1. Similarly, what goes out is P E 2, K E 2, I E 2 and F E 2. So, these are the things that goes out. Now, individually we can interpret what is potential energy m g times z kinetic energy half m b s square and internal energy it is letting mass times it is small u is internal energy and flow work is interpreted as pressure times its specific volume or volume. So, it is p v 1. So, likewise we can interpret. So, heat transfer that crosses the boundary it is net it had a delta q steady flow heat transfer delta w. Now, here we can say this is a path functions. So, we have to define and we view them when they cross the systems and as I mentioned that when you say it is a delta q it occurs by virtue of temperature difference and when you say steady flow work transfer for an open systems it is interpreted in the integral of V d p. Now, to define these things we have uh, two things here. One is we have to define the path because both heat and work are path functions. So, for that reasons a general relationship for pressure volume we can write as a P v to the power n is equal to constants. And this n is going to vary whether it is a constant pressure, constant volume, isothermal, isentropic or polytropic processes. And here also we will define another term that is C n and that C n stands as a specific heat and, and also it depends for what type of process it is. So, whether it is a constant pressure C p or it is a constant volume it is C v, isothermal process it is infinity and isentropic process 0 and polytropic process is defined in this manner. So, through this process through this exponential uh, term n uh, we can define the various terms in these equations. And how many times we also interpret the steady flow energy equations per unit mass basis. So, we can have a specific volume you can define the specific volume as total V by m or specific internal energy U by m. So, accordingly per unit mass basis if it is a fixed mass entering and leaving the open systems we can uh, simplify these equations. And in fact, this particular figure also shows for a different value of n what are the PDV work that can be defined. Another term for the open systems that or the first law talks about apart from the internal energy we define the term enthalpy. So, enthalpy is nothing but uh, this is say like internal energy plus flow energy. So, H is equal to U plus P V and there is also a definition for specific heats which is a function of internal energy as a, as a change in the internal energy with respect to temperatures. So, there are for gases we can have two specific heats because uh, we can view this a specific heat in a two different way either at constant volume or at constant pressures. So, accordingly with specific heats we define it as a constant pressure or constant volume difference between them is the characteristics gas constant for a given uh, fluid. Then we also have specific heat ratio k that is C p by C v and many a times we also interpret that if C v is a function of temperature. So, accordingly it cannot be taken as a constant, so it has to be in the integral form. Similarly, for enthalpy as well in which C p can be treated as a function of temperatures. So, this is the summary of an open systems. Now, uh, moving to the closed systems, so, in the closed systems uh, we mentioned that uh, this closed system only energy interaction there is no, no mass interactions. So, in that way if you start our basic equations that is first law for an open systems and try to apply it for a closed systems many terms will get cancelled that means we do not have these terms because this changes the first law does not allow them and this also there is flow energy term will also vanish. So, first law that becomes that u 1 plus delta q is equal to u 2 plus delta w and uh, ultimately we say delta q is equal to delta u plus delta w and in a very differential form we say dou q is equal to du plus dw. So, here these are since it is a path function it is inexact differential when since it is a u is a property so it is an exact differential. So, this is nothing but the first law for the closed systems. Now, already I defined cycle 
so cycle means in our subsequent lecture we will talk about that if you want to uh, extract energy some uh, convert energy from one form to other particularly heat to work you need a working fluid that has to operate in a cyclic manner and that uh, working fluid has to undergo some change of states and this change of states is accounted um, such that it forms a cycles. For example, this is a particular cycle and it is nothing but a diesel cycle. The process uh, goes from 1, 2, 3, 4 in a particular fa fashion and uh, in a similarly same process can be done in a TS diagrams. So, through this concept we can say that if you want to extract heat from a fuel then we must use a working fluid that works in a continuous manner such that this working fluid changes its state from 1 to 2 to 3 then 4 then 1 and so that it forms a cycle. And uh, for this particular diesel cycle which is seen that since initial states and final states are identical there is no change in the internal energy, but this dq delta q can be equal to delta w and this can be viewed it as a closed systems. So, it says that uh, the energy auditing will tell that total change in the heat interactions also balances to work. So, delta Q is equal to delta W. So, this is how the first law for a cycle. Now, previously we might have in the previous uh, courses of thermodynamics, we might have uh, um, known different processes. We are not going deep into all those things. Rather, I will try to emphasize what are the different thermodynamic and this particular table talks about the summary sheet for different processes isothermal, constant pressure, constant volume, reversible adiabatic, polytropic, throttling which are commonly used in all kinds of thermodynamic devices and correspondingly they are state relationship that means how this pressure volume relations are um, taken into account. And other properties like we look at the change of state in terms of internal energy, enthalpy, entropy, non-flow work, flow work, heat transfers. So, this is the summary sheet which is there and the derivations are already there in the basic level of thermodynamics course which we are not going into deep into this. Now, another point that I need to emphasize here, uh, many times we will be talking about perfect gas and non-perfect gas. So, uh, basically we all know an, uh, the equation for an ideal gas that is PV is equal to RT or MRT. Now, what happens when we have this ideal gas equation which says that pressure volume characteristics is equal to MP capital B is equal to MRT where it is P stands for pressure, V stands for total volume, M stands for mass, R stands for characteristics gas constant for that uh, gas and T stands for the absolute temperature. So, this equation holds good for an ideal gas. Now, if uh, it is a non-ideal gas, then this equation is changes to in this form where you introduce a term what is called as Z which is called as a compressibility factor. That means, uh, identically that means we do not um, if it is a non-perfect gas we say that why you say it is uh, not an ideal gas because the molecules are close enough to exert forces on each other. So, that when uh, as when the perfect glass is uh, highly compressed and highly cooled and in a critical conditions. So, it means that uh, there is a intermolecular force that binds the molecules that is one part. Second option is second thing that ideal gas law is not violated because each molecules is try to occupy some space. So, the total volume we accounted as V is less than that. So, for that reasons we have different equation of states that is called as van der Waals equation step uh, a state there are many such thermodynamic states for non ideal gases can be specified. But however, we will not deal into this, but what I am trying to say here is that if there is a non-ideal uh, non-perfect gas, how do you deal with? So, inter we introduce a factor that same equation we introduce a term what is called as a compressibility factor and this compressibility factor is plotted in a chart 
and this chart has y axis as a z and x axis is reduced pressure and there are plots like different values of reduced temperatures. So, we say reduced pressure and reduced temperature they are defined by P by P c and that is P r is equal to P by P c and T r is equal to T by T c and P and T are the pressure or any arbitrary pressure and te temperatures that the gas is specified. But P c and T c they are uh, called as critical values of pressure that means pressure and temperature at critical conditions. So, it varies from different gas to gas. Uh, so, for these values we can refer a gas tables like nitrogen will have a different values of P c and T c, oxygen will have different values of P c and T c. So, those numbers you can find out from the tables which are available in any common textbooks. This is that means when you know P c and T c then we can define this P r. So, what is the significance of these two? So, that means if you know this P r and T r for a given gas then we can easily use this chart to find out the deviation or compressibility factor and when you find this compressibility factor then you can see that whether the assumption of ideal gas equations is violated or not. So, that is the advantage of introducing this compressibility chart, but however more or less uh, unless and until we require very accurate information in most of the cases I validity of ideal gas is unanimously accepted. And the last segment of this is to introduce some steady flow devices which is governed by from this first law of thermodynamics and a steady flow devices are nothing but that means, they operate on steady processes thermodynamic processes and in which uh, the fluid flows through the control volume steadily. What we view is that fluid properties can change from point to point and at a fixed point they remain same. At fixed point they remain uh, same for the entire processes and in this steady flow device category we have like nozzles and diffuser, turbines and compressors, heat exchanger, throttle valves. So, what does this nozzle do? Nozzle expands the fluid at the expense that means velocity the increases at the expense of pressure and diffuser does exactly opposite version of nozzles. Then we have turbines and compressors. In the turbines the gas expands and in the compressor gas is compressed. So, this is what we say turbines and this is what the compressors. So, for compressor we require work input for turbine produces the power. Then we have heat exchanger, heat exchanger means it does not have a role of any producing the power it is mainly dealt with the uh, interaction of heat. So, we can have two ways that means, when you say it is a control volume two fluids can mix each other. So, we can have a mixing chamber. So, that means, the and combined fluid can leave. So, that is one way. Other way is that we can pass the two fluids in two different entities and they do not mix each other rather they only exchange the heat. So, that way we call this as a heat exchanger. Then another kind of device which is a throttle valve. So, throttle valve is a kind of a plug or capillary tube what it does it the it uh, there is a drop in uh, pressures. So, through this throttling valve devices what remains constant is the enthalpy. So, if you look at enthalpy is equal to h is equal to u plus p v. So, in a throttle valve enthalpy remains constant. So, uh, however, your initial state your uh, temperature T 1 may be equal to T 2 enthalpy may be same, but then the change in the volume increase in the pressure and volume will match such that enthalpy remains constant. And looking at those simple relations the steady flow energy equations can be framed for steam generator or heat exchanger, steam turbines, compressors, the nozzles and diffuser uh, we can frame. So, all these derivations are available in these books. So, this is nothing new, but this can be derived based on this figure in these equations. So, we start with these equations that is a first law equation for a steady flow energy systems based on the nature of the device uh, many terms can be neglected for a particular steady flow device 
and accordingly we can frame uh, these steady flow energy equations for different uh, components like generator steam, steam generator, heat exchanger and gas and steam turbines, compressors, nozzles and diffuser because these devices has a specific role to perform. So, this is all about for the discussion. So, with our discussion let me try to solve some uh, numerical problems which we have covered in this lecture. So, in this first problem I have just given a de demonstration that whether we have the ideal gas equation which you all know at the same time if the gas is treated as a non-ideal or non-perfect gas or you do not use this non-perfect gas then what is the solution. So, for that this particular problem demonstrates that we have a tank rigid tank that stores nitrogen and it has a volume as 0 0.3 meter cube and uh, it has a pressure P 70 bar T is equal to 23 degree centigrade or 296 Kelvin. So, this is the gas which is stored in the things and we need to find out mass by two means one by assuming a non perfect gas and second if the perfect gas equation is assumed. So, in other words we say let us say nitrogen is a non perfect gas then how do you calculate the mass. So, for that what we have to refer we have to refer the data table which is in the any thermodynamics books and that data table for gases or for pure gases. So, for nitrogen and this will implies two important value for what is called as critical values. And that is we one number is critical pressure this number we can note it down as 34 bar temperature for the critical temperature for nitrogen is 126.2 Kelvin and more details about this critical conditions will come in the next class in which we will deal with the pure substance. So, the for the time being let us see this is the critical pressure and critical temperature. Then we can find the reduced pressure and temperature. So, they are P r that is equal to P by P c. So, this number is 70 by 34 and that number is 2.05 and again T r that is T by T c this number is 296 divided by 126.2 it is 2.34. So, we have two numbers P r and T r now refer the generalized compressibility chart in fact this chart is available in any of these thermodynamics books this particular chart was taken from this book that is Moran and Shapiro. The snapshot of this graph shows this way. So, what we say is that for this P r and T r. So, we have P r is close to 2. So, this x axis talks about P r that is 2 and these are the lines of constant T r. So, constant T r lines starts somewhere in this line and uh, it is very close to this particular one. So, if you go along this vertical the T r line will stop somewhere here and this particular if you drop horizontal line onto this then we can uh, drop down close to the value of z is which is approximately 0 0.98 or it is we can say it is close to 1. So, putting this we can write this main equations for non-perfect gas we say P B is equal to 
m into z r t. So, from these equations we can say z is 0.98 and we can say what is mass is equal to p b by z r t and for nitrogens we can take this r as note down this r as 0 0.297 kilo joule per kg kelvin. So, m becomes 70 into 10 to the power 5 b 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.98 into 297 into 296. So, this will give you m is equal to 24.375 kg. Now, if you say it is a perfect gas other equation will turn out to be P v is equal to m r t and through this process we can also calculate mass for the ideal gas. So, we say if nitrogen treated as an ideal gas m ideal is equal to P v by r t and this number happens to be 23.88 kg. So, the questions was asked what is the percentage of error introduced. So, percentage of error for this mass calculation would be m actual mass m ideal gas mass divided by m ideal. So, how it deviates from this into 100 percent that is in the percentage. So, this happens to be 24.375 minus 23.88 divided by 23.88. So, it is approximately 0 0.2 or 0 0.02 or close to 2 percent. So, for this problem to say that nitrogen is treated as a non-ideal gas then we will introduce only 2 percent error. So, the another problem that is based on the steady flow devices in this case it is a water heater and it operates in a steady flow conditions it takes water at certain enthalpies and temperatures and it water is also heated with a steam and the steam is supplied at certain conditions uh, 105 degree centigrade and 2680 enthalpy. And of course, the mixer is living at 100 degree centigrade and 420 kilo joule per kg. We need to find the supply rate of the steam. So, to do that you can recall simply a open systems that consists one fluid in and there is another fluid that enters and there but one fluid leaves single fluids leaves. So, that is two inlet and one outlet. So, one case we say it is a water, other case we say steam. So, it is a water heater. So, conditions of water that means we say mass of water. Here also we have enthalpy of water, then mass of steam, enthalpy of steam and we have mixture. that is m m and h m. So, there are two equations that we can frame for this water heater problem. One is mass balance we say that m w plus m s is equal to m m. Then we have energy balance by neglecting all other terms and only retaining the heat terms, we write like we say delta W to be 0, delta Q to be 0, delta change in the potential energy is 0, change in the kinetic energy is 0. So, we can write steady state, steady flow equation as 
एम डब्ल्यू एच डब्ल्यू प्लस एम एस एच एस इज इक्वल टू एम एम एच एम नाउ इंट्रोड्यूस एम एम इन दिस इक्वेशन सो यू कैन बी इट कैन बी सिंप्लीफाइड आज एम डब्ल्यू एच डब्ल्यू प्लस एम एस एच एस इज इक्वल टू एम डब्ल्यू प्लस एम एस इंटू एच एम नाउ वॉट वी रिक्वायर इज दी सप्लाई रेट ऑफ स्टीम सो वी रिक्वायर एच एस सो अकॉर्डिंगली वी कैन राइट आज सप्लाई रेट ऑफ स्टीम मीन्स एम एस वी रिक्वायर एम एस सो वी हैव टू एक्सप्रेस इन टर्म्स ऑफ एम एस दैट इज इक्वल टू एम डब्ल्यू इंटू एच एम माइनस एच डब्ल्यू डिवाइडेड बाय एच एस माइनस एच एम सो डाटा दैट इज गिविन हियर इज एम डब्ल्यू फोर पॉइंट टू के जी पर सेकेंड देन वी हैव एच डब्ल्यू वाटर थ्री वन फाइव किलो जूल पर के जी एच एस टू सिक्स एट जीरो किलो जूल पर के जी एच देन एच एम मिक्सर इज फोर ट्वेंटी किलो जूल पर के जी नाउ इंसर्टिंग दिस वैल्यू वी राइट एम एस इज इक्वल टू फोर पॉइंट टू इंटू फोर ट्वेंटी माइनस थ्री वन फाइव डिवाइडेड बाई टू सिक्स एट जीरो माइनस फोर ट्वेंटी सो इसे एम एस इज इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट वन नाइन फाइव के जी पर सेकेंड और अप्रोक्सीमेटली इन टर्म्स ऑफ इन दिस नंबर इज लो वी कैन कन्वर्ट इट इन टू के जी पर आवर सो इट इज सेवन जीरो थ्री के जी पर आवर जस्ट मल्टीप्लाय थ्री सिक्स जीरो जीरो टू दिस एम एस वैल्यू वी हैव दिस सो सप्लाई रेट ऑफ स्टीम इज सेवन जीरो थ्री के जी पर आवर सो दिज आर दी टू सैम्पल प्रॉब्लम्स फॉर दिस आवर लेक्चर टूडे विद दिस आई कंक्लूड दिस लेक्चर थैंक यू फॉर योर अटेंशन Thank you.